Happy Monday, everyone. I, I hope it's not a manic Monday for you. It's kind of busy around here. And today I want to show you some videos. This is way cool. Uh, yesterday's video, I talked about search image formation and how your dog will oftentimes, if you pay attention, will give you a warning sign that there's an impending attack about to occur or your dog is getting ready to try and avoid the attack possibly of another animal. They give so many warning signs, it really is not that difficult to know this. You just simply have to pay attention. After all, we're dealing with an animal who doesn't possess language, but they possess a heavy dose of body language. Now, one of the things I wanna hone in on today, and we'll hone in on many other signals in upcoming videos, is the good old wagging tail. I call it the kill deer of all of dog owners, uh, just, just their whole thought process. It's a kill deer, and a kill deer, if you don't know what that is, is the bird that will fake a broken wing to draw predators away from the nest. Pretty darn smart. Well, the wagging tail has caused a lot of people to get bitten, a lot of other dogs to be attacked, because there's a general thought process that if the dog is wagging its tail, it's friendly. Well, that is the case in many occasions, but also many more. It is the complete opposite, complete opposite. Now, up here on this video, I've got a little beagle, and I want to kind of tell you something real quick here. The brain of this animal, like ours, has many structures in it, but predominantly there's a right side and a left side hemisphere. And they do a lot of lateralization back and forth, but the right side of this beagle's brain is geared, like ours, for detecting threats, evaluating them, assigning a value to them, high, medium, low, like a threat matrix. And then also it formulates a strategy real quick. Do I employ the dove strategy or do I employ the hawk strategy? Well, here's the interesting thing about this. The right side of the brain will control the tail like the left side will. But the, if the tail ever wags predominantly to the left side of the dog's body, well, that's like a neon sign in the fog. That's one of the best indicators that I can give you that your dog is unsure of that situation, if not fearful. Now, so when you watch your dog ever wag its tail, Look to see which side of its body does it predominantly wag. It can shift to the right a little bit, but mostly to the left. And sometimes it stays all the way to the left. Uh, I evaluate dogs all the time, and the owners of these dogs are amazed whenever I set them up for a circumstance which their tail will start to wag, and they stand there and they go, oh my gosh, you're absolutely right. I never knew that. And of course, the dog is backing up and acting fearful. So pay attention to that. Also pay attention to the elevation. The higher the tail is, regardless of which side it's wagging, the more sure the animal is. The lower the tail starts to go from about a neutral standpoint all the way to underneath, the more unsure they are. And then the more time it kicks over to that left side, definitely the more unsure they are. So there's degrees of it, just like with human beings. You can be a little concerned, then you can be frightened, and then you can be flat out panicking. Um, the more it wags to the right side of the body, the more confident the animal is, and more than likely that situation in which I'm going to either uh, encounter or engage another human being, or I'm going to engage another dog, is going to be more driven by social aspects of the brain, intra-group control, uh, interspecies type control. So all that being said there, I'm just gonna kind of play this in slow motion real quick, Eagle, and he just became alerted to something, something off in the distance. We don't get to see what that is, but notice the tail is high. I'm alert, but look how the corner leans to the left. And now I'm gonna reach over here, and there we go. See how it bends to the left side of the dog's body. So if you're looking at it from this view, it would be to your right side. But again, most dog owners are either walking next to their dog or they're behind their dog. Look to see where that tail goes. And you see it bends back. Now notice the dog barked right there. So that was a little woof, woof type thing, meaning I don't know for sure what it is. So I give that little woof, and look how the tail's bending to the left. Bending to the left. Now I'm looking around, there we go. Now I'm definitely barking. And even here, I'm gonna try and freeze as best I can. To, and, and in a video coming up later this week, I'm gonna talk about the corner of the eye. We call it the crescent moon. 
And whenever you see this, this is an animal that's extremely alert or an animal in which uh, it, it could be an impending attack. And so a lot of cases, that's what it is. In other cases, I'm just simply uh, very alert. I'm a little bit fearful at that moment because what the dog is doing is trying to multitask. I'm looking to my left to see if there's a escape route out here in case I have to while I'm trying to keep an eye on the approaching, and in this situation here, we don't know for sure if it's a dog or if it's a human, what it is. But now I'm kind of really giving, I'm doing my display behavior here. Yeah, I'm barking big time, and now my tail went just a little bit lower, but there it goes, kicks off to that left side again. Kicks off to the left. There we go. Now flip to the right, but now back to the left. Again, hanging out mostly to the left. Okay? So now, let me go ahead and pull up another video if I can. Can we watch that in full speed? Watch that in full speed? Sure, you bet. Let me go back to it in full speed. You ask and you shall receive. Here it comes, full speed. I'm not touching anything. Tail's kicked to the left. Dog is watching. Still left. There we go. Back to left. Up. At the end of the day, the biggest thing that a wagging tail is is conflict. The animal's conflicted at that moment. Many times they don't know whether a dove strategy or hawk strategy. Do I go forward? Do I go back? Do I go left? Do I go right? The animal's extremely conflicted. Sometimes in obedience we see it. We'll put a dog in a down stay and walk away from it and the dog will be holding it down, stay perfectly still. And I'll be talking to Joshua or one of my other trainers and out the corner of my eye, I see the animal's tail start to wag furiously. Anytime that happens, you need to stop right then, stop your conversation and just take a look around. Because many times it's either a squirrel coming down a tree, another dog approaching, another human approaching, because your dog's in a conflicted state. Wow, half of his brain's going, whoa, I want to get up and engage that squirrel. I want to engage that dog. I want to engage that human. But the right side of the brain is going, uh, did you see that crescent moon from Brian? The old out the corner of my eye thing. I think I'll just hold my down stay here. So the animal's conflicted, two opposing forces all the time. Hold a cat in your lap. See what that's like. Swish, swish, a cat that doesn't want to be in your lap. Feel that tail go back and forth. So at the base point, a wagging tail is conflict. Always know that even when they come to greet you, you come home. I've told you before, there's no such thing as equality in the dog world, in the wolf world. There's no equality. There is a hierarchy, whether you accept it or not. So anytime I come home, my dogs wag their tails. They can wag their tails because they're excited. But remember, the baseline of that is conflict. And they, why would they be conflicted? They want to make sure that the status quo is the same. Hey, man, uh, like you're number one and you're still number one, just so you know, I haven't seen you in a while, but things didn't change, did they? I'm still good with you, right? Yeah. And then once you assure that, you, you, you go through your regular behaviors, then you'll notice that the tail starts to settle down. Because remember, it takes energy to wag that darn tail. Are we good, Josh? We can roll to the next video. Let's do it. Okay, so I want to show you another video. If I could learn how to work my machine here. Okay, so now I'm going to show you, go back to my old wolf video that I showed you several days ago. I forget how many videos it is, but now watch this. So I'm going to slow down here. Here we go. And here's mama. Notice the tail kicking over to the right. Okay, I'm going to try and pause it here. There we go. So if I pause it again, forgive me about my technical skills. There we go. Kicking mostly to the right. Why? She's not the least bit unsure. Not at all. She's got this total thing under control. Look how high her tail is in contrast to the daughter's tail, which is lower and kicking to the left. Hers to her right. Okay, so now I'll play this again real slow. And mom goes back to doing what she's doing, and suddenly daughter approaches, and boom! Look at this. I love this shot right here. Look how far that tail is to the right. So if you can get in there, Joshua. And then look at her daughter. That thing couldn't bend anymore to the left. To the left. So again, it shows the emotional state of the animals and if you're lucky enough to see this when you're walking your dog or when someone is approaching your dog wow that is terrific because i am here to tell you it doesn't kick to the right 
unless the animal has some confidence about the situation. Okay, and then you see here how this goes. Oh, yeah, I'm going to show my teeth. Yeah, I'm real confident. Still to the right. Still to the right. Look at that thing bending over to the right, right there. Wow, amazing. Whereas daughter, okay, 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 well, 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 okay, I'm down a little bit lower there. Yep, I don't know. I'm sure I'm really conflicting. I'm getting mixed signals, and never mind. I'm just going to go to the ground. Okay, uh, so now I'm going to go off of that one. And now I want to show you one more video. I'm going to pause it right off the bat here. In this video here, remember the other day I brought out Red Zone, my stuffed dog, and I used him to show how we would put on the slip leash and to do the sit behavior, to deactivate the dog. He's just a big stuffed dog. Many times when I evaluate dogs who, through their behavioral assessment form, through a lengthy interview with the dog's owner, then with several tests leading up to this moment, I decide, what am I dealing with at that point? And to one of the, the tests I will run, if I think the dog may be reactive to unfamiliar dogs, I will bring a series of stuffed dogs into the room. And one of them looks like red zone, he tails up, ears forward, eyes straight on the other dog, standing taunt. And that in the wolf world, that in the dog world can be interpreted as I'm really confident and I'm really about to employ the hawk strategy. So I do that on purpose to see how the animal will react. Then I'll bring out another dog who is about yay high. I should have brought him out here, but I'll show you on another day. He's only about this tall. He has no facial expression at all. No eyes, no mouth, ears are floppy, flat up against the head. The tail is tucked underneath, very small in stature. And with dogs who are reactive to unfamiliar dogs, period, you will see no difference in their behavior. They will be every bit as violent or every bit as avoiding regardless of whatever stuffed dogs I bring out of the room. And then the same thing, then after we try out the stuff to make sure everything is safe, we don't want to push the dog too far up its arousal column, then we will possibly bring out a real dog. And again, they're, they're always consistent, always across the board. Dogs who are more normalized will may show a reaction to red zone, but they won't show a reaction to the small, dark colored dog with no facial expression. So this is a dog that I evaluated almost a couple years ago. Uh, his name is Willie. He's a really cool dog, by the way, and he, he did very well this training. But we had a hint that this dog may be reactive. And so just as a precursor here, I'm behind this door right here, getting ready to bring Red Zone out. And Willie's standing right here with his owner. So I'm going to kind of just do it. Can you extend the screen? Extend the screen. OK. Can you see good? good. All right. So now I'm going to reach across the screen here. Probably, let me, I'll tell you what. Let me stand on this side over here. Okay, then, then I won't be blocking the view here. Okay, so I'm just gonna go fast in this little part, but right here, look where the tail is. On the left side, look where the tail is. Now this video is gonna serve two purposes, kind of show you where the tail is. This is where the dog first realized that there's something behind this door, door number two, and I'm a little bit worried about it. Also, it will affirm what we call search image formation. This dog, through the interview, had, I had already discovered was very reactive to medium to tall dogs with pointed ears. In other words, perfect for me to use red zone. So now, here we go. I come out of the room walking red zone. And immediately, look how the tail goes up and the dog is standing taunt. So I see you, you're standing taunt, your tail is up red zone. I kind of match it. And this is called display. Right now, this dog is utilizing a dove strategy. I'm going to display, and I'm hoping that you're going to turn right around and go right back in the very room in which you just came out of. Okay, tail's a little bit to the right side, so this is now I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to try and display. I've had some success doing display in the past. And actually, the dog had a lot of success. <laughs> I mean, I'm talking over a year of success with hundreds of encounters. So the tail kind of kicks to the right because why? My display has never failed me before. Why would it fail me now? Remember, winners win, losers lose. So right there, it's kicked to the right. But now, wait a minute, I'm starting to get a little unsure. This thing keeps coming anyway. I'm thinking my display is going to fail me. Now we notice the tail kicks mostly to the left side. Mostly to the left side. Okay, let me grab my dot here. But now all of a sudden I turn and look at that. It's the second I turn, 
Look how fiercely the tail. Now look how far it is over here to the left side. Because we have movement. We have movement. Whereas I was standing still a second ago. Now it kicks to the right side. Why? Because the animal's leaving. Yay! I'm winning. I'm winning. I'm going to be in the winning column. But no, wait a minute. He didn't leave. He did not disappear. In fact, now he's coming back again. And anytime you move laterally to an animal, even to a human, it's going to cause more conflict because A, you're not attacking me, but you're also not leaving. So I do that on purpose. I move laterally to the animal. If you move directly to the animal, you can incite defense drive. I want to defend myself, especially if I'm on a leash. I don't have the option of fully deploying the other part of the dove strategy. I can only use the display part of it because the fleeing part is not an option. So therefore, I only have two things left. Either display like crazy and hope this thing goes away or attack. So now I'll just kind of move forward a little bit more, a little bit faster speed here. So I'm going to take up that. We go. Now I come all the way up and we there, look at that tail drop. Look how far it just dropped. Why? Because I'm moving in, I'm moving in, I'm moving in. Dog backs up. So the dog is unsure. As soon as I turn laterally, now the dog feels like it can safely approach here. I cannot approach. Here I can. And notice where the dog goes. Even though this animal is not alive, this is instinct. I talk about it all the time. Biologically prepared learning. For these people who think dogs are domesticated to a point that they no longer work off of, they no longer utilize the internal and instinctual mechanisms of their ancestors, I got thousands of rolls of film to, to disprove that. They do. Why would you do that as a stuffed animal? Because you don't know how to do anything else. And he goes right to the front. There are scent glands underneath the cheek of dogs around the facial area. So I'm going to smell here, smell here. I'm trying to get a positive ID as to what's going on. And again, I leave. I come back. Tails to the left, tails to the left, tails to the left. Dog doesn't know what to do. Comes in. Tail still to the left. Hooking to the left. I approach. I approach. Only when I back up. Okay, now I'm starting to know you. I'm starting to get okay with you. There we go. Now, in fact, I'll just go ahead and mount you. So there you go, very, very confident at that point there. Knock you over, yay, I win, winners win, losers lose. And there we go. Okay, so uh, go ahead. Uh, I don't wanna play that whole thing in real time only because uh, you can see that the number of minutes on this thing is actually over three and a half minutes. Uh, but on another day where I've got a little bit more time, you've got more time, I'll run the whole thing. I have thousands of these. Every single time. This is a bird eye camera coming from the ceiling right up here right now. Even this Facebook Live is being recorded right now. I use this to show it back to the owners. I use it to place it in the animal's file because then I will run this exact same test again a few months later, several months later, all depends on the dog, age, and so many other factors, to draw a comparison between the two. Kind of like a controlled experiment here. So just one of the many things that I do to determine why are you reactive? Are you just, A, a bully? Is this your territory and you're going to repel all intruders? Or are you a wee bit fearful? And that's what, that's what Willie was right there. He's just a wee bit fearful. Yeah, his display works kind of like you going, I'm really afraid here, but I'll tell you what, let me just show my stuff here and you'll just go away. Yeah, and it worked until this moment. But look how quickly he overcame it. All right, now, now I realize you're not going to attack me. Well, it's over. That's the neat thing about dogs, too, by the way. They just kind of get over it there during that moment. Uh, can have a lasting impact and can cause and, and adjust uh, future outcomes. But they're pretty neat animals in that they live in the here now type moment. Okay, so I hope you found this helpful. Next time you're out walking your dog, do me a favor. Either whip out your phone and send me a quick video of it. Let me break that tail down in slow motion there. Kind of keep an eye out for it, but just know this. Number one, any time the tail wags, your animal is conflicted. That is a biological response to a conflicted state. Emotions opposing, yin-yang, all these sort of things going on. So that means your dog's not settled right then. If that tail is straight up and it's not moving like captains does anytime, sometimes when you meet certain dogs, I call it white tail rising. I know. I know what's about to happen. Now I go, don't even go there. So he goes, oh, geez. And now all of a sudden the tail comes back down. Yeah, I'm still here. 
<laughs> just so you know, I didn't leave. I'm still here. Uh, watch that tail. Watch for it. All right, in some future videos coming up later this week, I will show other signals that animals give so that once you have an entire repertoire, now you know what to look for. Now you can be safer. Now you can be ready, ready to go. Okay, I hope that helped. And if it did help, and you think I'll help anyone else, send it to someone else. And if you have any questions, you know where to put them. You guys have been doing a good job with that. Put it on the thread or send it to me an email, brian with a Y at tamingthewild.com. Okay, guys, I got a lot of work to do. I have a couple of evals just like this to do now. So I'm going to hop off here and get busy. And I hope you guys are safe. And I'll check in with you tomorrow.